Okay, so we're going to put together all the transformations that we've been talking about already. Uh, so we notice that our previous problems that we did, all of them are combined together into uh, this one. So let's see how this all works together with transformations. Again, the first thing you always start with is the base graph of y equals absolute value of x. So we're going to go ahead and put that sketch right there. Okay, because again, you got absolute values in the original problem. Notice that I have three, three more graphs. That means that I have to actually show each of these transformations separately, and that's what you'll be doing on the exam as well. Let's first take care of the one on the inside there. We're going to first do this one. So I'm going to go ahead and label for you what exactly the graph is that we're drawing each time. We're going to do the absolute value of x plus 1. We already talked about this already uh, in a previous problem. We said that that was going to be your graph shifted over one to the left. So originally we had it there at zero, zero. We move the whole graph over one to the left and that's where your new graph is going to be. So that takes care of the inside one. Let's take care of the outside one. Now what you're going to do is because of the plus two that's there, you're going to take this current graph here and we're going to move this graph that's already been shifted to the left. We're going to move that graph up two units. Okay, so that means that the point that was originally here at negative one zero that we talked about earlier, that point's going to be shifted up two units, so it's going to be there. So the graph that you have is going to be looking like this. So that's taking into account two transformations. That's this one, the inside one moved the graph to the left. The outside one moved it up uh, two units. So that's this is the actual graph that we did. We did absolute value x plus one plus two and that moved it to this new position. One to the left and up two. Okay, But now we also have on the outside we have a negative sign. So what the negative sign does is it takes the graph and flips it over horizontal axis. Now you're not going to flip it over and have it be down below here. It doesn't do that flip. It flips it based on this pivot right here at this point. So at that point that's the part that gets shifted down. So we're still going to have it go through the same point. It's still going to go through that one, but you're using this point as a pivot. So when you move it down like this, the graph is going to end up going down. Now the way it works with these kind of graphs is it, go, it has a slope of 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, so up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. We're going to do the same thing except it flipped over, so we're going to go down 1, 1 to the right, down 1, 1 to the right instead. So that means that we know exactly where it's going to cross the x-axis that crosses that at, at positive 1. Now the other one, we're going to flip that, we're going to move that down so it goes down one over one to here, down one over one to here, and so now we have the two places where it crosses at negative three and positive one. So this here, this would be our final answer, okay, but on a test like I mentioned before, you got to make sure you show me all these steps all the way across. So you're going to draw the base graph first, then, it does, now the order doesn't matter, I should mention that. Let's suppose that we moved it up two first and then moved it over to the left. It's okay. That's, that's fine. It would have started out up here and moved over to there. That's fine. So if you, want to, if you switch these order around, that's perfectly okay to do that. Just as long as you show me some intermediate steps here in order to get to the final answer. I want you to do this this way because that way it demonstrates your knowledge of how transformations work.